uh, thank you for extending the invitation and for opportunity to present my paper. I also thank to uh, Professor Oz, uh, Janeta for uh, feedbacks, suggestion, and all the works throughout the, uh, writing this paper. So the, te the topic of my paper is uh, the impact of a presidential discourse on development of EU policy in Azerbaijan over 2003-2019. So methodologically, I have used Foucauldian discourse anal analysis. I mean, a discourse analysis that's based on uh, Michel Foucault's concept of discourse as well as power. Uh, so br first briefly about the, uh, the concept itself. Uh, the distinctive feature of Michel Foucault's discourse is that the, power, the notion of power is central to discourse. Yet discourse is an instrument and also an effect of power. But on the other side, side discourse itself produces power. Moreover, discourse is not static. It is changing and reshaping according to changing circumstances and context, contexts. So with this brief uh, conceptual uh, framework, I, I get on to the topic. In, during the first term of office of incumbent President Aliyev, over 2003 and 2008, he used absolutely staunch uh, integration per, uh, discourse on relations with the European Union. He stated in 2004 in Brussels and also other occasions in Baku and elsewhere that Azerbaijan's strategic choice is the integration with the European Union. Then this view was imprinted in top official documents. For example, uh, National Security uh, Concept uh, stated that the European integration is the strategic choice of Azerbaijan, and also Azerbaijan is committed to promotion of European values in Caucasus. Yet, he created a commission titled Commission for Integration of Azerbaijan into European Union. However, during the second term of office in 2008 and 2013, there was kind of uncertainty or limbo situation in presidential discourse. He refrained from using uh, integration or even partnership with regard to uh, relations with the European Union. And starting 2013, uh, with his third term office, it became it crystallized that president's discourse have changed from integration to partnership. He said, we are not going to integrate with the European Union. We will continue partnership, yet he accentuated that equal partnership. And then this was again imprinted in national documents. For example, the Commission for Integration of Azerbaijan into European Union was renamed as Commission for Cooperation with the Euro European Union. And other documents also made some changes. However, national security document, document which is still valid, uh, didn't change. It says the integration is the strategic goal of Azerbaijan. So as we know uh, that uh, what makes a discursive, discourse analysis uh, different from linguistic approach is also the context. And international context also important. There was a few important events that shaped it or reshaped the international context of, of the discourse change in Azerbaijan. First, 2008, Russian-Georgian conflict, and then 2012, Russian intervention in Syrian crisis, and then 2014, Crimean annexation and breakout of Eastern Ukraine conflict. Not only these this events themselves, themselves, but rather the what Azerbaijan, as well as Ukraine, Georgia, and others saw as weak, toothless, uh, or euphemist uh, European reaction was important for reshaping of the new discourse on part of Azerbaijan. There are also, of course, there was other international factors, such as Turkish factor, because Azerbaijan aligns with Turkey, and Turkey's relations also were, were deteriorated uh, with EU in later, that, as compared to 2005, when it, EU, uh, Turkey started negotiation talks. So a question is how this discursive practices or discourse shift affected the EU-Azerbaijan relations in, pra in practice, how it reverberated in this bilateral re relation, relations practically. 
to answer uh, 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 that question, uh, I, I have looked into three documents that were negotiated between Azerbaijan and EU. Association Agreement, Partnership Priorities Document, and uh, uh, Partnership Agreement. Association Agreement, it became clear during the 2015 Riga summit that Azerbaijan and EU have failed to reach an association agreement and they abandoned it. And because if you look, association is more in line with integration project, although integration uh, discourse, because uh, association doesn't guarantee membership perspective for Eastern partners, but still it implies uh, significant uh, harmonization, if not integration, with your, Europe, EU, key uh, and social, uh, political, and other e issues. Then, after abandoning uh, the association agreement negotiations, Azerbaijan and EU started talking about partnership. That's in line with the president's discourse, which was changed to partnership. And they signed so-called document partnership priorities. This partnership priorities set forth four priority areas of uh, uh, partnership in, in future. And then after signing partnership priorities document, 2017, February, they declared that EU and Azerbaijan are launching uh, negotiations on a new framework agreement to upgrade bilateral relations. And Partnership agreement is still under negotiations. It is still all, all, almost four years, but no uh, real or tangible result. Uh, and it, it is unforeseeable when, even if, whether it will be signed. So uh, how, that, that is in, gen, in general terms how uh, change of uh, integration to partnership discourse affects in general terms. But in practice, uh, if we look at the how discurs discursive practices also were made material practices, we need to look into, into two most uh, contentious issues between EU and Azerbaijan. There are, there are some, quite some issues, but I focus on two of them. The first, uh, the EU's attitude to Karabakh conflict settlement, and second, about domestic political reforms in Azerbaijan. So EU, uh, in its association agreement uh, text, said, Abkhazia, South Ossetia is part of Georgia, uh, Transnistria is part of Moldova, uh, Ukraine, uh, Crimea and Donbass is par are part of Ukraine. But when it came to Azerbaijan's text, EU said it supports Azerbaijan's territorial integrity, but without saying Karabakh is part of Azerbaijan. That is what Azerbaijan saw uh, that uh, integration means for in Azerbaijan's official uh, view, dictating uh, from Brussels to Baku and uh, making concessions on territorial integrity. So that was one reason they abandoned association agreement and was the uh, most important reason. And second, uh, President called EU's uh, demand for domestic reforms as an instruction list from Brussels and again rejected it. And if you look at the uh, as, partnership priorities doc document, actually it skips these two contentious issues. It's, it sets priority areas like energy efficiency, people to people uh, contact, humanitarian, economic trade issues, but no, nothing about conflict and nothing about uh, political reforms. And then Azerbaijan and EU started this, uh, the partnership new partnership agreement. Even the name, how to title the agreement, future agreement, is not agreed between Baku and Brussels. Azerbaijan uh, demands it to name it as strategic partnership agreement between Azerbaijan and EU, but EU wants to make it a comprehensive and enhanced ag ag agreement. Why it is important to Baku, to Baku's partnership discourse? Because Azerbaijan says, President says, we want equal partnership, and it is, uh, South Korea, Japan, and Canada have signed strategic partnership agreements with EU. So Azerbaijan wants to say that we are in law in same footing with Canada, South, uh, uh, South Korea. We are not uh, unequal partners. We are equal uh, partners with EU, which is a very uh, difficult deal, or maybe mission impossible. Because
because 27 nations and one small post-Soviet and Muslim majority country, because uh, cultural identity in the official discourse, discourse uh, makes uh, plays a role in the negotiate nego uh, in the uh, negotiations. And on the other side, again, domestic political issues. Uh, the, uh, the in the official discourse, president says we are equal partners. We cannot give instruct instruction lists uh, uh, to each other, and we know what is good for us, not brass Brussels. So that's how uh, partnership uh, discourse uh, reverberates practically in negotiations between EU and EU and uh, Azerbaijan. So just uh, one point uh, with regard again uh, this Karabakh conflict. Another dimension of uh, equal partnership discourse uh, uh, of Azerbaijan is that they say it is not only unequal uh, treatment uh, of EU versus Azerbaijan, but also in relation to other Eastern partnership nations, such as Georgia, uh, Ukraine, and Moldova. I told that there was a significant difference in the text and wording of the attitude to Karabakh co conflict. So the Baku says there is a double uh, standards, but also double uh, discrimination on one side with regard uh, between EU and uh, Azerbaijan, on the other side, as contrasted to Georgia, Ukraine, and uh, as, uh, Azerbaijan, uh, Mal Mal Moldova. So uh, th th that's uh, briefly how, how, how discursive practices was made also material pra practices that uh, uh, em is embodied in the these two contentious issues, Karabakh conflict and pol domestic poli pol political uh, re uh, re uh, reforms. And still, after the new wave of Karabakh war uh, that just ended a, a year, a, a month ago, uh, it is hard to pred predict how Azerbaijan and EU will progress with the negotiations on new uh, fr framework agreement. And apart from that, I, I, I have noticed three general uh, conclusions or patterns in not only in Azerbaijan, but also in post-Soviet countries through this discourse analysis of, of the uh, foreign policy. The first thing is that uh, in Azerbaijan, as well as a, a post-Soviet space, there's think tank industry is underdeveloped. That's, that, that's why discourse, official discourse analysis uh, matters important. We can understand how the policies are shaped, or the perspectives of respective na nations. And the second point is that proper culture of public debating and argumentation in Azerbaijan, also other post-Soviet countries and Eastern partnership are, are lacking. And again, therefore, we need to use uh, to refer to uh, official discourse rather than uh, public debate debating, which either uh, is not in good shape or doesn't exist at all. And finally, info, individual leaders have stronger voices than uh, institutions. And again, if individual le leaders has stronger voice, it, it is more effective to look into the discourse of, the, of those leaders than institutional papers. For example, in Azerbaijan, sec national security concept says strategic goal of Azerbaijan is the integration with the European Union, but president's discourse shifted it to in partnership. And we are guided in the negotiations by the partnership pers so per per perspective. But that is not unique to Azerbaijan, even in, if you look at Georgia, the most uh, reform, which is known as most reforms, most uh, uh, pro-Western, post-Soviet uh, republic in Eastern partnership region, informal leader has stronger voice in sometimes than even prime minister's office or pre pre uh, uh, pre uh, pre president's office. So I, I end my uh, presentation uh, a bit, uh, earlier so that you can have opportunity to, to ask more questions and challenging questions or opposing questions. Thank you. Thank you, Rahim. We do not have questions from the audience. So uh, my colleagues, Sierra, Eva, please. Thank you very much, Anastasia, if I may start. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Raimov, for your thought-provoking uh, presentation. 
reading your paper, I was actually mm, very, very intrigued uh, by the methodology that uh, you used, uh, which, uh, mm, especially for, for lawyers, is something which is uh, not exactly uh, common. I wanted to ask you if you can elaborate uh, a little bit more on the uh, beneficial of discourse analysis for uh, your research. Thank you. The dis discourse, uh, uh, the presence discourse specifically was for me starting point to look into formation of Azerbaijan's uh, EU policy, to EU, EU po uh, po policy, because uh, as I said, uh, when I look into the official documents that in, in sometimes like uh, the national security concept is not is not very informing uh, actually because the actual negotiations going in accordance with the line of this partnership discourse used by by uh, 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 pr president and also I looked in using discourse analysis using how discursive practices become material uh, pra 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 uh, material pra practices. So, so yet, uh, and also there is a complex relationship between power and also between those in power and this discourse, because discourse as an instrument of uh, po power and the president used discourse to, to kind of shape a new reality. In, in that reality, uh, it looks partnership perspective is more relevant for Azerbaijan than integration uh, uh, relevant because we don't want to lose our territory. So uh, briefly, I can say uh, this. I hope uh, it explains. Thank you. Yes, it does. Uh, Yeva, do you have? Uh... Yes, uh, thank you for your presentation. And I have a question regarding the, uh, the uh, recent Nagorno-Karabakh conflict. How, could you please elaborate more how you predict what would be the impact of the recent hostilities and the stance of Azerbaijan towards the EU negotiations? Thank you. Uh, uh, I, I think it is uh, hard to predict because there is a, a a number of factors. Again, I said, uh, wording of Karabakh in the document is important to Azerbaijan, and we know how it will uh, go further. For example, Azerbaijan says Karabakh conflict finished. We shouldn't use Karabakh conflict words, and Karabakh Armenians are citizens. But Armenia says, uh, no, it is not finished. We need to settle the status. And then that, will, that issue will be brought to EU, to Brussels. And Brussels doesn't want to shun Armenia or Azerbaijan, he wants to keep both. So I think that issue uh, in Riga will continue. That will depend on EU's wording and how Azerbaijan will be flexible with that. And the second, you know, as a result of uh, Karabakh conflict, this latest phase, the relations between France, which is the major player in EU, has much deteriorated with Azerbaijan and French Senate recently adopted a resolution recommending the government to recognize Karabakh as an independent Armenian state that uh, caused a fewer in as, as Azerbaijan. So these two uh, uh, facts will affect. On the other side, especially after uh, Brexit area, Bre you know, British companies are active in Azerbaijan and the Brits and Azeris have good partnerships. So uh, Br Britain was seen as supporter of Azerbaijan within the EU. Now we don't have that, that support. So it will complicate the situation. And in the, with this back, backdrop, background, yet Azerbaijan getting closer to Turkey. And now it has uh, boots on the ground, Russian boots, I mean, so all this will affect uh, Azerbaijan's perspective on uh, relations with the EU. I don't say they will not sign the agreement. They will sign, but that depends what will be the scope. I guess it will be, it, it, there is a high chance it will be less ambitious than uh, the negotiation, than the one which was uh, negotiate, negotiated previously. Um, thank you, Rahim. If there are no more questions from the colleagues, then